using the 3D sketch method that I demonstrated in the previous lesson. So the order of the sketches was the side profile, the rear profile, and the front profile. And finally, the hoop around the middle that helps the boundary surface keep its shape. Let's edit this last sketch. Notice that this is also made from a spline, but at the ends, the spline has been controlled in a special way. If I delete this spline to recreate it, I would just place three points. The first point needs to have a pierce relationship with the back profile. The second point needs to have a pierce relationship with the side profile. And the third point needs to have a pierce relationship with the front profile. Now this still doesn't get me a shape that's going to be smooth across the plane of symmetry. So what I need to do is select the shape, and when you do this, these handles will be shown. I can grab the handle and then apply a horizontal relationship. Horizontal in this case just means parallel to the short arm of the red origin. Vertical would then be parallel to the long arm of the origin. So let's make this horizontal. Let's do the same thing over here. Grab this handle, call that one horizontal. And this gives us a shape that will at least be tangent to itself across the plane of symmetry. If you want this to be more circular, less egg-shaped, you can use the handles to drag in distance to create a nicer shape that you prefer. Or you could select this handle and give this one a vertical relationship. I'm going to X out of this sketch so I don't save the changes I've created. I'll go back to the previous sketch. But you can see that that's how this sketch was made as well. Before continuing on, I should rename these sketches as I've named the top three so that I know their functions. Call this one the side profile. This is the back profile front profile, and I'll just call this one the mid hoop. The main surface should also be renamed. These become more important if someone else is going to handle your models or if you're going to edit them later on. Renaming can be an important tool to make use of. Now I'll roll down for one more feature, and this is a trim feature. Trim is like the cut feature when you're working with solids. In this case, I used another spline to make the trim, and so let's take a look at that. With this color scheme, it's somewhat hard to see, but I have an opening for the face and an opening at the neck. When you're building parts with surfaces, it is considered best practice in many cases to first build a surface that's larger than you need and then cut it back. And that's what I've done in both of these cases. The neck opening was built larger than we needed and we're going to just trim it back. We didn't need any of the material around the face area, but it was easier to create the entire helmet in a single feature rather than try to make the jaw area separately. So this sketch will trim away the parts that we don't need. Let's see how that works with the trim feature. In this case, the trim type is a standard trim, and the sketch with the two splines that we saw was created. We want to keep the selections, and so we select it in the main part of the helmet. In this case, everything that's purple will be kept, and everything that's blue will be discarded. The standard trim type is what you use if you're going to trim with a sketch or a plane. You can use mutual trims for trimming with surfaces. We'll take a look at that later. 
while we're here, let's rename this trim. So this is face and neck trim. Roll it down one more. And now we're going to start adding some cosmetic features to the helmet. I'm going to turn off some of these sketches in the meantime. The display pane is very useful for turning off all sorts of geometry. I could have created this same trim in the face and neck trim feature. But because it has a different function, I didn't do it that way. I'm going to rename this Rear Ridges. The reason I did this is because I want to add another shape in here that isn't part of the smooth helmet. And so I used a boundary surface for this. We'll take a look at this boundary surface in the next lesson as we continue to go through the helmet model.